The following content is not meant for children. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I am Maester Alix, and this is Shadowrun Hong Kong. And we're right back we left off here, having dealt with the Wapon leadership and picked up Gaucho. Oh, Gaucho. So let's head back. Now let's double check, make sure that we do indeed want to leave. Yep. It's, uh, we are ready to go. Hioi. The MTR rockets noiselessly towards the Hioi along the edge of the Kowloon Bay. Black water glitters in the night with the light of a thousand reflected storefronts. Gaichu stares sightlessly out the window, one hand pressed to the glass. The Wapon leaders are dead. They forced your hand and paid the price for it. Their story was a cleverly crafted lie, meant to put the ghoul to death for their greed. But, but was... The trade you made worth it. The uncertainty of that choice is clouded in the sky above you. Alright. So we have... Go to the Emperor's Tomb. And that, and we're going to get some optional rest. And, uh... I would like to tell Kindly Chang... Oh, no, no, we don't need to tell her how that we finished the mission. We can just go there. And it looks like some of our friends need attention. Let's see. Gains uh, defensive ability as plus two armor, plus one dodge. Nice. Claw ability. Rip. Does an additional two damage, two bleeding. No, we're gonna we're gonna red samurai this for you. Let's see. You don't get anything. You're good. You're good. So just you. Cool. Red samurai. Nice. Yeah, and we're going to claim payment at the computer. Wait, hello. Oh, a smuggler. Two men in dirty synth leather jackets look up from their conversation as you approach. They both look haggard. Their shoulders slump with exhaustion and neither appears to have shaved this morning. What do you want, man? We're talking here. I'm new in town. Figured I could, uh... Figured I'd pay to make all the connections I can. A grim chuckle rumbles out of him. You choose the wrong day, stranger. We're moving further downstream. We're doing it today. There's something wrong with this place. Too many bad dreams. Alright. What? Well, yeah? What sort of bad dreams? The kind that bite. You'll see it too if you stay here long enough. The long, uh, the long haul, the living... The thing living in the ivory crown. I've already seen it. Lots of people in town dreamed it, or something like it. From the folks I've talked to, there was a bunch of different versions. Some people turned away from the quarter, uh, went down alleys, that kind of thing. I've never set foot in the walled city before, stranger, so tell me. Why the hell am I dreaming all of a about it all of a sudden? I don't even know the damn thing looks like on the inside. Well, let's see. I think there's something strange going on, something magical, and the walled city is where it's coming from. Collective hallucination, maybe? Yeah. Collective the uh, not the situation the first one it's a curse nothing else it could be everybody knows the place is haunted a living hell full of evil spirits and poison key if you're not careful you'll wind up uh, trapped inside with the rest of the human garbage uh, his companion cuts in you catch a healthy whiff of alcohol in his breath that isn't gonna happen to us no way only the lowest of the low wind up in the walled city so like you said yeah, we're going to go further downstream. As soon as the things are packed, we're out of here. Damn right, this place is dump anyway. Let's try a look in Macau. Uh, to hell with this place. Best of luck then. I'd say the same to see. I'd say the same to you, but you're staying here in Hioi after all. Of the three of us, you're the only one who's most likely going to need it. Oh. All right. Well, let's go to the mission computer. Yeah. Alright. Check your inbox for new messages. Three. Attending a party. From Kindly Chang. Maester, I need you to come to the parlor. A friendly business partner of mine named Dr. Shen Yang has a need of your services. Something about attending a fancy party in Repulse Bay. He was unwilling to give me details. 
Okay. Raymond's Black, Raymond Black's history. Duncan asked me to do some digging on my own uh, into Raymond's history. I guess he doesn't trust Kindly Chang to give him the full story. I can't say I blame him since uh, she's since she'd hide things from us uh, if it was in her best interest to do so. So I've been poking around in various corners of the Matrix trying to dig up what I can. Most sinners leave de uh, data trail the size of an aircraft carrier in the wake. Working backwards in time, Raymond started out that way, but it slowly tapers into nothingness. Sure, I can find some basic records in Seattle, power, utilities, a couple of public uh, discussion sites he signed up for, but the further back I get, the less I find. And the craziest part is, prior to 2032, I can't find anything at all uh, that shouldn't be possible. It's like Raymond didn't exist before then. I don't know. I'm going to keep digging, but it'll take me a while, and I'll let you know when I get some news worth sharing. Isabel. Well, thank you. And opportunity. Uh, Preface bypassed. You'll know, come see me if a chance to trade opportunity maxim. Huh. Okay, well, we'll look. That, it, that was the new messages. Old jobs. Uh, claim payment for the Wapong Gowan Guard of Murders. A few months later, message pops into screen. I asked you to solve a problem, and your method of solving was kill the people I was doing the favor for. I have half a mind to throw you into the goddamn bay. Still, Wapoans are now more afraid of me than ever, and the money's standing, starting to flow again, so I, pose that's, I suppose that's something. I've attached your payment, and the Wapoans made it explicitly clear that they, won't have, they wouldn't have paid it all except for to ensure you never come back. Oh boy. Alright. Go back. BBS. Let's see. Post pay data for sale. Nice. Claim payments. Exotic animal dealer. Nice. And keywords. Victoria Harbor. Uh, I know a lot of are interested in that 50,000 new yen the uh, police force is promising in connection to the terrorist cell they're hunting. I've been digging around and found, and for some better information. I think I've got the stuff of value. Turns out they had a handler here in Hong Kong named Raymond Black. The police tried to take him into custody the day before, were forced to kill him in a shootout. Looks like Black and the terrorists are members of the White Star group out in Henan. Isn't White Star all about restoring Imperial China? One of those terrorists they killed was obviously North American. Why would he be helping a pro-imperialist group? You got money, you can buy any kind of person you need. You're the Shadowlands, Ome. You should know that. So what do we know about Black and his band of thugs? Anything we can use to track him down? The data I've been able to dig up says that Black was from Henan and uh, distantly related to the royal family. He spent a couple of decades in Seattle making connections for the shadows in preparation for attack on the free empire zone i've attached the dossier and his remaining agents oh my goodness you sift through the long stream of data detailing you and duncan are with the general details about your name and life correct but many of the small details are wildly inaccurate you're listed as having lived in laos for the past four years while duncan is known to having spent most of his life in prison you move to the to pursue gabit nesabel's ostensible biographies the dossier that lists Gobbit's real name is Yu Chan Gui, and her place of birth is Xi'an. Uh, according to the contents, she's 23 years old and served with the uh, Bai Hu corporate military until convicted of insubordination, uh, led her to dishonorable discharge. While you can't be certain Gobbit doesn't speak Mandarin, the idea of her being in the military, any military, is downright laughable. Isabel, in turn, is listed as, a, uh, as Fatima Abukar. Apparently, Isabel was uh, educated in early age in terrorism and piracy by the revolutionaries of the, uh, I'm not even going to try that, territories, and wanted a connection with the bombing in 2052 bomb attack on French embassy in Johannesburg. Given that you know that Isabel grew up here in Hong Kong, this information appears to be as laughable and incorrect as your own dossier. Let's see. Posey Bash. Alright folks, we're trying it again, this time a super secret codename. There's no telling how long it will last, so let the bashing begin. Ah, uh, yeah. No poetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Looking for Decker. Uh, looking for experienced Decker for a discreet milk run of, uh, on a supply house. Uh, purveyors of recreational substances. Poten uh, potential for long-term arrangement. 
For a team that's been together for years, running uh, your basic heist and occasional transport gig, where we get a reliable fixer and a long list of happy clients. Requirement: you must be have a good sense of humor. Hey, are you willing to give a newbie a shot? I've been in and out of the matrix since I was in school. I was I raised some cred sticks doing odd jobs, and I got a hot new cyberdeck and I'm itching to try it on a real run. You know, man, we we would really really like to find a long-term decker. And you kind of don't know your stuff. You said yourself, sorry. Ah, oh, come on. You said it was a milk run. How else could I shadow around a start if not with an easy gig? I'm being upfront with you. Doesn't that count for something? Fine, I got a test for you. Uh, hack this guy, Captain Scone, and change his password to erotic massage. I'm on it. Thanks. Done. Am I in or what? Uh, say, say yes, say yes. Uh, ah, dang. Uh, I'm a Zoom. May I introduce you to our rigger, Captain Scone. You'll find your fine addition. You'll make a fine addition to our team. Thank you. You won't regret this. You're gonna stop getting. Pe you gotta stop telling, getting people to hack me. Give me, uh, give me, or I'll be looking for a new rigger next. Ah, uh, you know you. I know you love me. Right. Top shelf sublet available immediately. Title says good location, cheap rent, serious offers only. What do you mean by top shelf? In a fancy corp condo? How'd you manage that? Now, man, it's literally the top shelf of the con converted maintenance closet I live in. You're joking. No joke. Oh, man. This is... Uh, okay. So, no no news. Posted our data. Go back. Alright. Walk away. We're going to uh, get some rest. And then meet her friend. You wake with a start, your limbs bound up in a sweaty tangle of linen bedsheets, an incredible sorrow swells in your chest. You feel empty, half-starved, and alone. Fragmentary, fragmentary memories of a half-remembered dream uh, fit, flit through your mind. They're already fading away to nothing. Let them fade. You blink three, four times, letting the seconds pass between closing your eyes and opening them again. Something is nagging at you, a lingering unease. At once, the memories hit you with the force of a sledgehammer. Cracking dead center into your forebrain. The walled city. You were back in the walled city. You don't remember how you got there, but it couldn't have been any place else. Even the barons weren't so squalid. You remember craning your neck to look above you. The buildings that made up this part of the walled city were new construction, even cheaper than the old. Now the foundations had rotted out from under them, and the buildings leaned into one another like a gang of drunken men. The rain of plaster and asbestos sprinkled down, dusting your shoulders. You begin to creep forward, picking your way past the piles of refuse and debris, past the pimps and the dumpster fires, the broken glass and the dirty needles. The air reeked of rot and sewage and industrial waste, a disgusting melange that caught your sinuses and crawled down your throat. You gagged on the stink, but you didn't slow but it didn't slow you down. In the back of your mind you knew that you had no reason to be doing this. There was nothing for you in the walled city. You shouldn't have been there. But the rest of you was hungry, unbearably and indescribably hungry and that part of you knew that if you kept moving you'd finally get to eat as you forced your way deeper into the walled city locals stood in their windows and stared inexplicably some of them dropped to their knees you kept moving you could see something in the distance a silhouette something enormous at least twice the size of a troll but delicate it was beautiful the huge figure beckoned you gesturing with slender limb an explosion of warmth filled your chest and you knew that you were uh that you could reach it, the problem, and your problems would be over. It, she, would make you make all of your sorrows disappear. You moved forward at a crawl. The figure fell impossibly far away. You reached out, calling to her, and then you woke up. The empty feeling in your stomach slowly fades, taking the strength and vibrance of the memories along with it. Okay, so let's go talk to Kindly Chang and see what her friend wants. Because when your boss says show up, you do that. Right, well, let's talk to Kindly first, then Dr. Chen Yang. Kindly Chang appears uh, to be nearing the end of a harsh exchange with Strangler Bao, who is listening intently. So you tell that little pustule that Auntie Chang isn't happy. You get it? Not happy at all. 
Don't tell him that I'm displeased. Don't tell him that I didn't take it well. Tell him I'm extremely, uh, I'm extremely chopping mad, and if he doesn't want what happened to ye to happen to him, he'd better get his head uh, and his ass wired together and get and me that payment today. She raised an eyebrow. Was that message clear enough, Mr. Bao? Yes, Miss Chang. I'll explain these things to him in terms he can understand. Bao steps back and becomes meat statue once more. Chang's voice turns uh, treacle sweet when she sees you awaiting for her. Ah, oh, newly minted Shadowrunner. How are you taking to your role, Maester? Um. Like a duck to water, Auntie. I had no doubt, my sweet. I have a nose for talent. And how about Mr. Gunshow? We're dealing with his new life. Uh. He should be okay. Just need some time to get used to all of this. Very good, my dear. Very good. She smiles. Was there something specific you came to see me about? Um. Just checking in, Auntie. It pays to stay in touch. I agree, yes. Personal contract. Personal contact gets results. I have some good news for you. One of my people successfully planted a wiretap on the police's special duties unit. If news is your foster father or the plastic faced man re reaches them, it will reach me as well. So far, your foster father has proven a difficult man to find. The plastic faced man is elusive. He's clearly someone who knows how to stay out of the public eye. But I have my network running day and night, and I still have some favors I can call in if need be. We'll find them both. It's only a matter of time. Until then, go about your business. I'm sure that more work will come to you any moment. She glances back to Bao. Now I have something pressing business to attend to. The, ki uh, the kind that ends parentless children. I'll, t uh, I'll talk to you later. Boop -ba doop doop doop. You there. A, bo a, ro a rotund balding dwarf in a cheap suit turns to face you. Light glints from the heavy gold chains that he ra that hang around his neck. When he speaks, the voice greets your ears in high nasal and has become contorted enough to approximation of a New York accent. Pleased to meet you. Chang was kind enough to arrange this little sit-down between us. He extends a stab-like hand, or slab-like hand for you to shake. You can call me Dr. Shen Yang. Uh, let's see. Pleased to meet you. I'm Maester. Uh, why are you named after a city? She says, it's always good to meet a paying client. Uh, pleased to meet you. I'm Maester. His grip is soft and his palm is moist like it's been shaking hands with a boneless ham. Uh, you share a long, uncomfortable, flaccid handshake before he finally releases you. I'm, uh, looking for a little outside help on a problem I've been having. Ordinarily, I'd handle it myself or have some of my friends see to it, but it's kinda delicate, you know? My guys be noticed before they made any headway in my problem, so I figured, hey, I hire contractors all the time, might as well get some contractors of a different stripe. Let's see. Lasting friendships are made through favors and exchanges. I'm all ears. Tell me about your problem. Maybe we can help. I run a little film studio. Southern Crown Films. We mostly do tri trade work, but record some stims too. Or sims too. Maybe you've seen some of my stuff? Space Mongolian, uh, Space Mongols from the Moon? Uh, the Flavor of Pomegranates? Ultimate Kill Squad? Uh, can't say I've had the pleasure. Ah, too bad. I'll send you over some Chang so you can take a look. Anyway, there's this guy in the industry and we've been buttonheads since day one. Name's Neville Ma. He runs Yellow Spring Studios. No matter what I do, I can't shut him out of the biz. He always manages to get one over on me, steal my stars. He's been running me into the ground with this slow with this show called Promises in Moonlight. The star's a girl named Penelope Wong. New talent, but the viewers have been going nuts over. And the show's uh, she's the show's linchpin. Hang on, I'm getting there. About six months ago, Neville was out in Gongju for some hoity-toity party. He's on the road, probably drunk, semi, uh, and a semi comes out of nowhere and pow! Wax his fancy new Euro car west wind. Bad luck for Neville, good luck for me. I figure, hey, that's the end of him for the year, and I'm starting to, and I'm planning on some new stuff he can't compete for inside the hospital. You follow me so far? Uh, let me guess, he found a way to compete with you from the hospital. No, worse. 
The bastard is out of the hospital. He's back in the game, banging out season two of Promises in the Moonlight. I need to. I need that show off the air, one way or another. And that, my friend, is where you come in. All right. Already? Or how long did it take him to recuperate? I tell you, kid, he should have been in the hospital for at least three months. Uh, in physical therapy, a lot longer. Only took him a week to get out. It could have been, and I couldn't freaking believe it. The guy is a uh, medical care cost. The guy kind of medical care costs top dollar. He's got a lot of money, but not that much. Recovery time like that means one of two things is going on. Neville could have found himself a silent partner, someone willing to pay top dollar for cutting edge care. I don't think it's likely, but it could have happened. And if it ain't that, then the smart money is saying that he's been skimming off the top of Yellow Springs earnings and not reporting it to the other shareholders. And you want me to look into that, I take it? I need you to go to... I need you to get me something to blackmail Neville with. Find out he could afford that much out of the hospital. How he could afford to get out of the hospital that quick. He works out of his penthouse most days, so search his computer, closet, sock drawer, whatever. There's got to be something incriminating there. Where is this penthouse? Neville lives in, in the Repulse Bay. It's the real swanky joint south end of Hong Kong Island by the bay. Uh, with, by the bay, the same name. Uh, I haven't been able to get anybody to poke around his apartment because security is so tight. Lucky for you, though, Neville's throwing a party on the mezzanine level with all the shops and a restaurant and a balcony and such. He's celebrating the second season launch of the show, and everybody's going to be there. Going to make a real snarl for the building security. You might want to hit him up, or hit up the party if you can bluff your way in. Everybody close to Neville will be there. Most of them will be three sheets to the wind by the time you get there. Some discreet questioning might get me the dirt I need. Just remember, if, uh, if you go to the party, don't use your real name. Go with Argyle. Should be safe enough. There's uh, nobody in the biz out there with that name, so nobody's going to ask questions about how your work's going. All right. Hit the apartment, hit the party, dig up blackmail information on Neville Ma. Sounds easy enough. He nods vigorously. Oh, yeah. Chen's talked you up while I approached her with this job. Give me what she, uh, and what she told me. This job should be cake. Now, the blackmail material is what I need more than anything, but if you can get... Penelope Wong out of her contract. I'll pay extra. Got it? I want that star power on my side. One last thing. I don't want you to start in a scene while you're up there. You interrupt this party, making a mess, trash the apartment, and I'm not paying you. We clear on that? Uh, we're clear. Good. I can't have Ma knowing that I'm after him. In the business, everybody's got dirty tricks, but if you make it public, you're using them? Uh, he draws a finger across his throat. That's it. My career is dead as People's Republic of China. Nobody will work for me ever again. So don't embarrass me, eh? Understood. I'll be discreet. Got it. Reputation is important. I'll make sure that your I'll make sure yours remains intact. Glad to hear it. Listen, you do this for me, I'll make sure you get paid well. But I'll also tell my friends you come highly recommended. Alright, sounds like we have a you don't seem like you deal with shadow runners much. Shadowrunners, Moonlight Prancers, who gives a crap? I got money and I got a job and I don't care who uh, does it as long as the price is right. What's more, I got a lot of friends around town, a lot of them run in your circles too. He looks at you eagerness and he's like, so we got a deal? We got a deal. He grins wide. Good man, that's what I like to hear. When you're done, drop Chang a line. I'll come meet you back here and hand over the money. Well then. Looks like we have a new job to do, and we want and we have to talk to Maxim over here on the tech boot. Maximum law. Don't mess with the law. Hi. Maximum law surveys the, the docks from beneath his uh, meticulously patched uh, tarpaulin, goggles and belted with electronics. His arms folded, his expression a stern, sweet, drenched little king. A sweat-drenched little king. His boat rocks gently. As you approach, he looks sharply at you and breaks into an awkward smile. Hey, maester. I was hoping you'd come around. You got a minute? What's up? Kindly had Wapone burn your sin. Word is you're working for her. Not normal yellow lotus stuff. Shadow running. Yeah, I'm now an unusual asset. Wicked. Uh, Law says, says it distinctly in a hushed tone, then seems to catch himself. He draws himself into his full height. He is usual demeanor of self-assurance returns. 
That's pretty ironclad, Maester. Pretty vicious. If you do good, you'll be noticed. Listen, if you've got info about runs, I can make it worth something. We Rapolans like to call this uh, metadata, and Rapolans like to get the word on the street from active operations. Don't, uh... What Wapoan services to their don't include prying? It's not prying. It's gathering information. The word run on the inform uh, the word world runs on information. Uh, if you got metadata for me, great. If not, see if I care. All right. Let's see you later. Got things to do. Oh, uh, let's see. Now, if I talk to him again, can I? If I have any metadata. I got some metadata for you. Never mind, looks like something else. Okay, bye, Law. Alright, so let's go over here. Oh, wait, now that I have, uh. Now that I have some money, maybe I can afford some better armor. Actually, no, if we're gonna do that swanky gig, I doubt I'll need the armor. But, before we head out, I think this is a good time to, uh, say. Thank you all for joining me. I really hope you're enjoying this series as much as I'm enjoying making it for all of you. If you do, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and of course share, because sharing is caring. Uh, if you also could check out the links down below, that's where all the really good stuff is, including links to my Discord server. Well, with that being said, I shall see you all next time.